Welcome and hello. This is a video tutorial in HECRAS. And in this lesson, we're going to be talking about steady state flow analysis, specifically importing data from a DSS file record. All right, what I have on the screen here is my HECRAS. And we have the main file interface as well as the geometric data. And I've got three cross sections right here on a reach. In the previous lesson, we talked about going up to the edit menu and then steady flow data. This is where we're going to be working in this uh, lesson as well. And I already have a record right here. So let me go ahead and delete that. OK, instead of manually entering in the steady flow data here, uh, the users also have the option to import data from a DSS path. So I'm going to bring up the uh, HECRAS users manual. I'll leave a link to this page in the description. I'm about a third of the way down into this page where it starts with importing steady flow data from DSS. It talks about what DSS is. It's a data storage system that contains uh, time series data, paired data, and gridded data uh, that is organized into files and then subdivided into specific records using this A, B, C, D, E, F file path designation. Okay, then it later talks about how you can read data from DSS into HECRAS using a two step process. And that's how what I'm going to do to describe um, how this works in this video. So I'm going to um, close that. We're back in HECRAS. Remember to bring up this data, this dialog box. I went up to edit steady flow data. And it, it wants to start me off with this particular river reach. That's fine. It's the one and only river reach I have in the system. And it is at River Station 2000, River A, Reach 1. The first step of the two step process involves going up to the file menu and clicking this set location for DSS connection. And then the second of the two steps is to actually use this DSS import tool. All right, so let's start with the first step that's set the location for the DSS connection. When we click that button, we have a new dialog box that pops up that allows us to specify the river, the reach, the river station, and then the associated path that we want set to that particular river station. We see some of the same controls we have in other dialog boxes. So what we'll do is select the river, select the reach, and select the river station. My options for river station, of course, are for each cross section of either 0, 1000, or 2000. We also have some tools that we've seen from uh, previous dialog boxes, such as delete row and then add steady flow river stations. So when I click that add steady flow river stations, I think it's the same thing. OK, it's allowing me to add multiple. That's fine. I don't need more than one. I'll just click this delete row from table button. So do that. That's how that works. And then I have the option to either type in the DSS file path and part names which uh, seems a little absurd because um, that's a lot of typing and you can very easily do a typo. So I would recommend clicking this uh, ellipse button over here on the right to select the actual file path. So click the ellipse button. Now we have a different dialog box here, and this is going to allow us to select the file, the DSS file, as well as the path, which will be displayed down here. Now I already have a file selected, so I'm going to unselect. Yeah, so this button here is to add a DSS file, and this is to delete a DSS file. OK, did my auto save on me and close that dialog box. Great. All right, let me bring that back up. And then I'm going to uh, delete that record again. I'm going to open up DSS view. If you don't uh, have DSS view and you're not familiar with it, that's fine. But I will leave a link to the playlist for my DSS view videos. So I would certainly recommend uh, understanding DSS view. DSS view is a specific HEC software for reading, writing and manipulating DSS files and their paths. In this particular file, data.dss, which I have saved in the same directory as my HECRAS file, I've got five separate paths here. We have a time series data, we have a paired data set and so on. This time series data is what I'm going to use when and use to import into HECRAS. And if you look at the data by first selecting that record and then clicking on the table button, what we have here is four, I'm sorry, five different rows of data that all represent a different flow rate, 5,000, 5,600, 6,000, 5,700, and uh, 5,300. And that's in CFS. So I don't want to get into too many details about how this is created. Go ahead and check out that DSS view playlist and uh, download the software and get familiar with how um, these paths work if you're interested. OK, so I'm going to minimize that. So anyway, 
what I want to do now in this HECRAS dialog box is navigate to that .dss file, data.dss. So I'll click this add file button right here. And then I've already navigated to it right here. So you just use your Windows navigation tools, click on the DSS file, and then boom, once that's selected, I now have the five different paths down here for me to select to connect to that particular uh, cross section at River Station 2000. If you want to use the filters, for instance, if you had dozens or hundreds of different paths in this file, you can uh, go ahead and select the filters. So if I wanted just the paired data, I could select paired data. And um, if I wanted to select, say, profile dash flow, that's part C filter, I'd go ahead and select that. If you want to unselect the filter, that's fine. You just uh, select blank value. And then, uh, yeah, part F over here, I can select 2000. All right. So I'm going to unselect that. Uh, the one I want to select here is going to be flow for flow rate for our steady state flow. And then what else we can do? We can show the plot. That shows the plot of the values. This is really more for a unsteady flow. So maybe I'll talk about this topic during unsteady flow as well. And then to hide the plot, click this hide plot button over here. So we can also delete the file, re-add the file. I think I talked about that. All right. So once we have that assignment, I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And what that did was it populated the DSS file and part A through F on these paths to designate the exact file path that I want to associate with this river station. All right. So that's all we have to do there. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. What we need to do now is the second part of this operation, which is file DSS import. This opens up this dialog box right here, which is importing DSS data. This is actually the data that I already had specified from um, preparing this lesson. But what you're going to want to do is select the start date time. Again, this feels a little bit more like it's for non-steady state, but this is indeed from the steady state analysis uh, chapter in the user's manual, so I'm covering it now. And then for the starting time, it's from 0 um, midnight until 5 a.m. or 4 a.m. And then I have a few other options here. So for instance, if I wanted to select one hour at a time, in fact, that's probably what I want to do, then it'll create a profile for each hour or whatever interval that I set here between the starting and the end date time up at the top. And then down below here, I would have the option to interpolate in the event that my particular time interval does not fall on a same uh, data value from the DSS path. So let's go ahead and click OK here. Actually, first, we need to click the Import Data button. So I click Import Data, and the data has been imported. Let me resize this window. There we go. And now we have um, the 5,000 CFS at midnight, 5,600 CFS at 1 a.m., 6,000 CFS at 2 a.m., and so on. You can, of course, modify these values. You can uh, create a new record in this table. You can also just remove the column very easily by changing this number of profiles down to well, one, for instance. And if I click tab, it says, am I sure I want to delete? Yep. And it's gone. OK, I really don't think this is any easier than um, just typing in the numbers, especially if you just have a single profile or just a few profiles. But in the event you had a lot of data, then perhaps using this DSS tool may be worth it. OK, let me go ahead and demonstrate one more thing here. I'm going to go back to DSS import. And then, for instance, if I selected 30 minutes right here, and then use the linear interpolation, then what it's going to do is it's going to give me a profile every 30 minutes, and it's going to interpolate between the one hour CFS flow values that we've entered at the 30 minute time period. So let me just go ahead and click import data. Now we have nine different values, nine different profiles. And if I expand this over to the right, you see we're still going from midnight to 4 a.m., but we now have a record for 1230 a.m., 130 a.m., 2.30 a.m. and so on. So this 5,300 is going to be the flow rate in CFS, which is the linear interpolation between 5,000 CFS at midnight and 5,600 CFS at 1 a.m. So that's how that works. Again, you can go up to options and um, edit the profile names in case you don't want the actual time date stamp as the profile name. More information on that is in my previous lesson with some of the options up here are really helpful and also apply to when you are importing this uh, DSS data into your steady flow analysis. So back to the user's manual, this is the screenshot that they had for this particular topic. And then at the very bottom, before 
we actually perform the steady flow calculations. We see a paragraph here about using or importing steady flow data from an existing output profile. This option allows the user to select an existing plan from a current project and to import flow data from that plan output into the current steady flow file. So this may be a situation where you want to import computed flows from an unsteady flow run and import them into a steady flow file in order to make a steady flow analysis model. So that is it for this lesson. We talked about going up to the steady flow data editor and then using the tools under file set location for DSS connection and then import DSS. And then lastly, that import flows from existing output file.